Hello, my name is Elsa Moino. I'm an associate professor at the Physics of the Earth and Astrophysics Department of the University Complutense of Madrid. In this video, we will discuss what a climate scenario is. A scenario is a de description of how the future may develop, based on a coherent and internally consistent set of assumptions about key drivers. It is not a prediction, but an answer to a what-if investigation of the implications of development choices and actions. By exploring the climate consequences of a representative number of these scenarios, we can have a range of possible future climates to test the consequences of the different choices we can make. The current framework of climate scenarios in the sixth assessment report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is what is called Shared Socioeconomic Pathways, or SSP for short. These are a set of five alternative futures of societal development which consist of qualitative and quantitative components. The qualitative components are the narratives or storylines that describe the evolutions of aspects of society that provide the logic of the scenarios, but which are difficult to quantify. They describe issues such as the quality of institutions, the political stability or the environmental awareness. The narratives of these five scenarios span a range of possible futures in terms of challenges they imply for both mitigation and adaptation to climate change. Let's have a look at each of them. SSP1 is named sustainability, or taking the green road. In this scenario, the world shifts gradually to a more sustainable path, emphasizing inclusive development that respects the environment. Global management slowly improves and education and health investment also. The emphasis shifts from economic growth to human well-being. Inequalities reduce across and within countries. Consu consumption is oriented towards low material growth. This scenario poses low challenges to both mitigation and adaptation. SSP2 is named middle of the road. In it, social, economic and technological trends do not shift markedly from historical patterns. Development and income growth progress unevenly among countries. Global and national institutions work towards sustainable goals, but make slow progress. The environment degrades, though there are some improvements and the intensity of resource and energy use declines. Income inequality persists or improves only slowly. This scenario presents moderate challenges to mitigation and adaptation with a significant heterogeneity across and within countries. SSP3 is named regional rivalry or a rocky road and presents a resurgent nationalism. Regional conflicts push countries to increasingly focus on domestic or regional issues. Investment in education and technological development decline. The economy development is slow, consumption is material intensive, and inequalities persist or worsen over time. Population growth is uneven, low in industrialized countries and high in developing ones. There is a low international priority for environmental concerns, leading to strong degradation in some regions. This scenario presents strong challenges to both mitigation and adaptation to climate change. SSP4 is named inequality or a row divided. Its main characteristic is the inequality and stratification, both across and within countries. There is a highly unequal investment in human capital and a growing gap between an international connected society that contributes to knowledge and economic growth and a fragmented collection of lower income, poorly educated societies that work in a labor intensive, low tech economy. 
social cohesion degrades and conflict and unrest become increasingly common. Technology development is high only in the high-tech economy. This scenario presents low challenges to mitigation as there is a well-integrated international class capable of quick actions. However, there is a high challenge to adaptation for the population with low levels of development. SSP5 is named Fossil Fuel Development, or taking the highway. This scenario is driven by the economic success of industrialized and emerging economies, producing rapid technological progress and development of human capital. There is an increasing international integration of markets and strong investments in health, education and institutions. All this is done by exploiting the abundant fossil fuel resources and the adoption of energy-intensive lifestyle. There is a relative, relatively little effort to avoid potential global environmental impacts. These choices result in a scenario with potentially high challenges to mitigation. However, due to the human development, it presents relatively low challenges to adaptation to climate change. The quantitative component of the scenario provides a translation of the narratives into the evolution of elements such as population, education, urbanization and economic development. Consistently with the narratives, population is lowest in the SSP 1 and 5, with a growing population that levels off by mid-century and which is reduced to 7 billion at the end of it. Conversely, population is highest for SSP 3, with 12.6 billion by the end of the century, while SSP 2 and SSP 4 depict an intermediate scenario for population growth. As for education, which has important implications for economic growth and vulnerability, it varies between scenario, with the global improvements in SSP 1, 5 and 2, while increases in 3 and especially 4 are small and even decline late in the century. The gross domestic product also translates the narrative into quantitative measures, with SSP 5 projecting the highest development and global average income levels, and SSP3 the lowest due to its strong fragmentation that leads to slow growth rates. As for inequality, in SSP5 closely followed by SSP1, inequality is highly reduced along the century, while for SSP4 it even increases at the end of it. These five scenarios depict vastly different energy futures, with a wide range of energy demand and supply structures and of land use. Inside each of the five scenarios, there are multiple potential pathways with different energy demand and supply uh, structures and land use evolution. The range of possible pathways is further ex extended by the potential addition of mitigation policies to each of the five scenarios that were commented previously. To choose a representative set among the wide range of possible futures, the climate research community further categorizes each scenario by reference to the approximate radiative forcing level it entails at the end of the 21st century. The Working Group 1 of the latest IPCC assessment report has chosen a core set of five illustrative shared socioeconomic pathway scenarios, where the first number labels the originating narrative presented earlier and the last numbers label the approximate radiative forcing in watts per square meter by 2100. They span from SSP1-1.9, which is a highly sustainable scenario with high mitigation policies that holds warming by 2100 to approximately 1.5 degrees Celsius above the late 20, uh, 19th century levels, to SSP5-8.5, which is a strongly fossil fuel development scenario with no addition climate policies. In general, there is no attached likelihood to the scenarios, though both extremes seems, uh, seem less likely, while they cannot be ruled out. These current climate scenarios offer detailed data of greenhouse gases and pollutant emissions, 
and or concentrations, which are inputs for the climate models. The models then provide a range of outcomes that varies from one scenario to another and also within scenarios, as they change from one model to another. For instance, for global surface air temperature, the expected changes by 2100 range from an average increase of 0.7 degrees Celsius with respect to current values under SSP1-1.9 to 4.0 degrees Celsius under SSP5-8.5. However, inside each scenario, there is also a range of possible outcomes. For instance, for SSP3-7.0, the average expected change by 2100 is 3.1 degrees Celsius, but the models also show a range of possible changes spanning from 2.2 to 4.7 degrees Celsius. I hope you now have a better understanding of current climate scenarios that can help you navigate through the rest of the course. Thank you for watching.